Hello again, everybody. It's like a tech is here with my WWE wall review for tonight, October the 22nd, 2012. Of course, the last wall before Hell in a Cell taking place at the Eisen Center, New Jersey. Decent crowd in New Jersey. Well, the crowd, especially with some great chance, I would vote to them during my review. Over tonight's wall, another typical three hour wall. Another mixed bag. We had one good, one really good match. Okay ending. And a fiery. So, it was a decent, another decent wall heading towards Hell in a Cell. Uh, when it comes to make me buy Hell in a Cell, it makes me not want to buy it. In my mind, Hell in a Cell is going to be the weakest pay per view of the year. I'll give you my thoughts on Hell in a Cell and why I believe Hell in a Cell is going to be the one dirty pay per view that's the worst of the year. Probably even more so than anything from TNA, maybe. I may be overstating, but I could be on that. I'll explain that at the end of this review. I'll give you my thoughts on why I think Hell in a Cell is going to suck. Now, let's kick off with, well, speaking of Hell in a Cell, in the pay-per-view itself, of course, we need to find out who would face off against the Tag Team Champions, Team Hell No, at the pay-per-view this Sunday, as the final, the Tag Team Title Tournament, took place to kick off Water Night. The match that was supposed to take place last week, but, but canceled because of Ray Mysterio's illness, took place tonight. As Team World Scholars took on Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara. Now, Sin Cara and Mysterio were grounded in this okay matchup that began Wall. As uh, Team World Scholars has a great teamwork, great tags in and out, and isolating Mysterio and Sin Cara, grounding them and, and making them, having them not do their ground, uh, their area maneuvers, like taking them to the ground and basically ground them and not. Be able to nail their high flying maneuvers, but mainly towards the match. Mysterio and Sankar got back on the winning track. Mysterio got a double 6 1 9. But Mysterio had a pitfall attempt after dropping the dime on Cody. This is the ending after dropping the dime on Cody. Sandow put himself in front of the referee to prevent the count. To prevent the count. And Sankar came in and attacked Damien. And then, of course, with the distraction, Ray Mysterio got in the crossroads. One, two, three, Team World Scholars, Cody Rhodes, and Damian Sandow will be taking on Team Hell No, who appeared on the screen. And the little joke thing was the little comedy routine is getting a little old for me, especially later on in the evening in a segment involving those four men, World Scholars, and Team Hell No. That I'm glad it didn't go without a hitch. So. So, Kane was, uh, that, that, you see him, now you don't doubt stupid. Now the jokes are getting just weird. And I'm glad one storyline ended tonight. One little thing ended tonight, which I'll get to. So there you go. World Scholars win the tournament and prepare to take on Team Hell No for the tag team titles at Hell in a Cell. Which, like I said, may be a bad pay-per-view. Now, on our second match tonight, speaking of Hell in a Cell, the man that will be defending the Intercontinental, the Intercontinental Championship against The Miz who was commentating during this match at Hell in a Cell in a rematch following winning the title on main event. Kofi Kingston took on a man we don't see that often on Raw, probably relegated the superstars in Saturday Morning Slam, and made those two shells probably. Michael McGillicuddy, aka Michael Henning, of course, Kurt Henning's son. Uh, McGillicuddy did have some offense. A man didn't get too involved in the match, surprisingly. But Miguel Cody looked okay in the matchup, tough guy, but of course, Kofi Kingston made the comeback, delivering a Trump in Paradise that was not as stiff as his one he delivered on Miz last week that had Miz cuts on his head. So, 1 2 3 victory for Kofi, sending a message to the Miz, and hopefully, Miz doesn't get it kicked that hard again by Kofi. We'll see what happens against Kofi and Miz. Miz will be in a match against a guy who has beaten him before later on in the evening. The undeserving number one contender. And speaking of that situation, we had, of course, John Cena up next following Kofi's victory over Michael McKill got an okay matchup, little squash up. Of course, uh, Cena said he's medically cleared to wrestle now. His shoulder's fully recovered, so that means he'll probably start wrestling after having a sound. Of course, be Fit for Survivor Series, as I kind of predicted on my tackle in a day. So, Cena talked about the fact that he couldn't wrestle at the pay-per-view that Go, but I mean, Ryback is going to be wrestling Punk. Of course, the undeserving number one contender 
for the WWE Championship. I said it on the tagline. I said it last week. I'll say it again. Ryback does not deserve the main event. That's why Hell in a Cell is going to suck with him and Punk. Not only at the pay-per-view, but in Hell in a Cell. Probably one of the most Hell in a Cell matches besides Big Show and Sheamus. Anyway, so Cena's being Ryback's little cheerleader. And at that moment, here comes the reigning WWE Champion, Cena Punk. Because John was talking about Punk needs to get his ass whipped, blah, 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 blah. And that's what he said to Punk after Punk did his little spear about the New York Giants, the cheering on the San Francisco Giants. This is this video. Giants are going to World Series against the Tigers. I think Giants were winning at this video timing. Anyway, Punk is talking about beating Ryback by hook or crook, blah, 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 blah. In Cena, you're just a cheerleader now. You suck. Blah, 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 and Cena's like, I can't beat you, Punk, because I'm injured right now. Like That's what Punk said. You can't beat me, Cena, blah, 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 blah. And that's when Cena said that I'm medically cleared. And Punk does what he's been doing a lot lately, warning. And we did have some overrated chants. Of course, a lot of people think that. You know, I think I almost agree with that sentiment. You know, I liked Punk early on, and now it's like, you know, his stick is almost getting a little old. I like him still, but... I agree with many that he is getting a little overrated. You know, he's certainly one of the best guys, like best in the world. Now it's like you know, now that's debatable. You know, like months ago, there was no debate that Punk was the best besides Daniel Bryan. Like Daniel Bryan and Punk are the best two wrest best two wrestlers in the world. Daniel Bryan proved why he's one of the two best guys, of course, in his match tonight, which I'll get to in a moment. But Punk now, you know, this whole Heyman thing's got out of control. But, uh, of course, Punk ran away after Cena threatened to wrestle him. But we'll probably see Cena and Punk in another match somewhere down the line. Probably at Survivor Series. Because this, I think everyone, and I, I believe, I think Cena was supposed to face Punk. But, of course, the injury kind of prevented it. And that's where we are, where we are now with the whole Ryback thing. Which I'll get to him in his match later on. But until then, we had a match involving the United States Champion in a, in a non-title match. As Antonio Sassaro took on Justin Gabriel. Of course, the guy he took on last week on Raw. This week, Justin Gabriel got a surprise victory over Mr. Sa Mr. Sassaro. Sassaro, it looked like Sassaro was going to dominate the match yet again. Being mostly the aggressor in this decent matchup. He delivered an uppercut. And he was ready to finish Gabriel. Weakening him for this big moves. The high uppercut and, of course, the equalizer. But Justin Gabriel... Came sprawling back with a big, big splash across the like on top of the ring, like over the over the top rope and stuff. And he also delivered a nasty kick to Mr. Sassolo, which led towards him getting the 450 splash in the victory over the United States champion. I smell a possible match for Mr. Gabriel for the United States Championship at Hell in a Cell. Because we didn't find out what the pre-show is. Because usually there's a pre-show match on Dunry.com. And it wasn't announced tonight. Usually they announced that doing Water Night. And that's weird they didn't announce it. But maybe because of this whole general manager thing, which I'll get to in a moment. Got everyone distracted for a moment. So, there you go. Justin Gabriel gets a victory of a send to Solo. Possible United States match for him soon. But he'll probably lose. But he may get a match for the title after defeating the U.S. champion in a ton of match. I mentioned, like I said, I mentioned about them not announcing a pre-show match. There might be a reason because of the whole general manager thing. That's what our next segment led to. Uh, AJ tweeted that she was in an emergency meeting with the board of directors. And she came at the end of the hour with Vince on her side. And AJ said that there's been some accusations about her having an affair with a superstar who would find out to be John Cena. Uh, AJ said, because of these accusations of me apparently fraternizing fret, with a superstar, I am forced to resign as general manager of Monday Night Wall. And that's when Vince announced that there's not going to be an interim GM or anything that is a managing consultant. It's, that's weird. Like it, that's stupid. The whole thing is uh, you 
your managing supervisor. That's kind of weird. You can't just replace someone. It may uh, be in Trium GM or anything. You gotta be a managing supervisor. That's kind of stupid. Maybe Vicky that, especially after Paul Heyman came out and said he should have been the new GM or new managing consultant or whatever. He interrupted, happy that AJ got fired. And basically all New Jersey was too. I heard some na 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 <laughs> goodbye. I think I agree with them. Yes, AJ needed to go this whole AJ storyline with her being a crazy bitch and all this crazy chick storyline. That's gone way too far and I'm glad AJ got fired now. No, but unfortunately we got Vicky Guerrero as the managing consultant. But Vicky's the perfect thing for that, you know. Everyone hates Vicky Guerrero. She gets more heat than almost any hero in WWE. Well, maybe Punk could rival that, and of course, uh, Miz and some other people. But Vicky and Cole are the two biggest heels. On one of the two biggest heels. Cole's no longer here, but Vicky's still a big heel. You still hear many people boo her out the building yet again tonight. So Vicky made a big main event for tonight, which was Sheamus against. CM Punk, champion for this champion Lumberjack match. And Punk did not leave this time. And I'll get to that main event in a few minutes here. But while Vicky took care of that, of course, Vicky told AJ to leave. And AJ was leaving, but she then realized, wait a minute, I wasn't allowed to hit people when I was GM. I'm no longer on probation. I'm fired. Bam! She beat the shit out of Vicky. So, the curvy match between AJ and Vicky Soon enough, but it'd be stupid. It'd be kind of a, kind of a gimmicky match. I see on Facebook people saying, put him in a ball and panties match. We don't want to see Vicky in ball and panties. There was a little tease of it tonight because uh, we did see AJ trying to pull on Vicky's cloth. We almost saw Vicky in ball and panties, which is more frightening than watching a whole Hogan sex tape. Anyway, like I said in my videos before, my humor may be not the humorous to some people, it's humorous to me. I just say him because I say him. Anyway, after Vicky got the crap beat out of her by AJ, was AJ being fired? Because we found out later on in the evening that the the alleged superstar that Vicky, I mean that AJ was accused of fraternizing with, was John Cena. Because there was a segment later on with John Cena talking to AJ about if you need anything, AJ, call me. And I was like, wait a minute, don't tell me John Cena's the guy that Vic, that AJ is being accused of having a relationship with. Well, it was. Apparently, Vicky's it was it turned out to be like something you would see on like the Kardashian show, like a reality show. Stupid, he said, she said bullshit. That Vic, that AJ was asked on a date by John Cena, and they went on a business dinner. And Vicky thought it was more than business; there was more pleasure. That's when she turned on the board of directors. That's why AJ got had to resign because she was accused of fertilizing with Cena. The the just friends, that's what they say. And John Cena confronted Vicky later about it, blah, 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 blah. And Vicky's like, Vicky Guerrero did not screw AJ. John Cena screwed AJ <laughs> from a job. So she pulled the Vince on John Cena. Like the whole Brett, it's not Vince screwed Brett, Brett screwed Brett. It was kind of like that, but it was John Cena screwed AJ, not, a not Vicky screwed AJ. So, but we'll probably see this whole stupid storyline evolve in the like, next couple of weeks with uh, Vicky and AJ and Cena as the weeks to come. We'll probably see that stupid storyline develop. And uh, Vicky and AJ wasn't really cat fight tonight. We also saw cat fight involving Eve and Caitlyn over their little storyline about Eve being the one to attack Caitlyn, but Eve's lying. But now, probably Eve and Caitlyn and Layla. I smell a triple threat with them at Hell in a Cell for sure for the Divas title. Because both Caitlyn and Layla want to be the fuck out of Eve. Because Eve been put this good girl act and is not a good girl. She's once a whole ski, always a whole ski, Eve. Anyway, after the whole shenanigan with Vicky and AJ, on to our next match. Which was. Uh. I think it was, uh. Oh, Miz and Ryback. Goldberg, Ryback. There was a lot of Goldberg chance tonight, of course. As we all know, the Miz-Ryback match was kind of the match that kind of kick-started Ryback. Because, of course, after Miz lost to Ryback, that was the night when Miz, that Ryback first confronted Punk after he beat the crap out of Miz. I thought Ryback was going to get an IC title shot. Not a dirty title shot that he doesn't even deserve. 
But it was a typical wideback, almost a typical wideback squash. Uh, Miz did have some offense on him. But Miz was like all the rest. He got fed to the beast. Known as wideback. Got the, sh got the shell shot. Got the big clothesline. After an attempt missed by wideback. One, two, three. Wideback sent a big message. Loud and clear by attacking the crap out of Miz. As he sends a message to CM Punk for the match in Hell in a Cell. At Hell in a Cell. This Sunday in a match. Which... Is gonna be stupid. In my mind. I've said it all along. Way back. He's not ready for the main event. He doesn't deserve the match. He doesn't even deserve the win, let alone be in the main event this Sunday at Hell in a Cell. So, uh, they go now on to our next match involving two former, well, one current Money in the Bank winner and one former Money in the Bank winner. Probably the best match of the night. Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. Very great technical matchup, very grueling matchup. Um, with Vicky not at ringside, we thought, hey, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Because Vicky's not involved, because she's got her managing consultant job to take care of. But then here comes Kane. Uh, Kane did get a little involved in the match. And uh, not that much. But uh, anyway... Uh, so like I guess we saw everything like that. And it was, like I said, it was a great matchup between Dolph Ziggler and Dan Bryan. Dan Bryan had a little knee injury in the middle of the match. We don't know, we don't know. Fake or not, we don't know. But despite that, Dan Bryan gets the next he kicks on Dolph Ziggler. But of course, Dolph Ziggler did nail the zigzag. Following Kane distracting Daniel Bryan, Kane kind of distracted Bryan, which helped Dolph Ziggler get the zigzag on Daniel Bryan in the one, two, three victory from Dolph Ziggler in a very grueling technical matchup between him and Daniel Bryan. Very exciting matchup. The crowd was loving it. So there you go. Dolph Ziggler, who wants to cash in Money in the Bank this Sunday at the Hell in a Cell pay per view against either Big Show or Sheamus, will he actually do it? Time will tell. Dolph Ziggler is destined to be champion in everyone's mind. That's what Money in the Bank is. A guaranteed title opportunity. Guaranteed win. Unless you're John Cena. Try to cash it in and you lose it. Being the only man to do so. So there you go. Dolph Ziggler beating Kane. I mean, beating Daniel Bryan with a little help from Kane. But Kane and Daniel Bryan were done yet. As Kane was preparing for his match against Big Show next. Max Fleger came out. Instead, that Vicky Guerrero had a surprise for Team Hell No. The newly tagged game they were going to do. That. Like, like the newly red game. I was like, fuck. This skit is stupid. Because they were going to involve Kane and Daniel Bryan this newly tagged game with Kane once again delivering bad jokes with the whole I love rainbows and puppies. Hell no, I know. They were going to compete in this game, this game, against Wold Scholars, who, thank God, knew this is a stupid segment. They are intellectual tag team, because you had Demon Zen down and all. So he's like, fuck this. He didn't say fuck. He's like, screw this, man. We're not going to be in this stupid skit. So, World Scholars didn't participate in the skit. But they did participate in the outcome of the Big Show Kane match. Because Darren Bryan was watching Kane and Wing Cyrus trying to help Kane, especially after Kane. He was actually like, trying to cheer on Kane for a moment after Kane got into a bear hug. In Big Show. And Big Show and Kane have wrestled many times. And I've said this about both of them on my previous videos. That Kane and Big Show were great 15 years ago. They were more agile. They could do better moves. Now they're just slow and lazy now. Big Show and Kane. They're not as good as they once were. I'm like Undertaker who's still good. Despite so many injuries. We've taken so many surgeries. Anyway. Kane and Big Show. Okay matchup. And I told you that Walt Skyers would get involved. In the outcome. Well. Indeed, as Kane was ready to deliver his flying clothesline, Walt Scholars came out on the ramp, distracted Kane and Daniel Bryan enough for Big Show to deliver a choke slam on Kane and the one, two, three victory for Big Show, giving himself more medal for his match against Sheamus this Sunday for one of the other stupid matches that he held a cell, while Sandow and Cody 
want to deliver the whole message for the match in Hell in a Cell, attacking Daniel Bryan after Big Show knocked out Kane. I'm sorry, knocked out Kane with the with the weapons of mass destruction. He, I think he did choke slam, but they gave him the G, they gave him the WMD. So sent down with Cody preparing to take on the tag champs, delivering a big message to him after Big Show defeated Kane. With, like I said, with a distraction from Team Walt Scholars. So there you go. Now, on to our next match. I think it was Pumpkin. Was Pumpkin Sheamus next? I think Pumpkin Sheamus was next. I think that was next, unless there was a, another match before that. There could be another match. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here, make sure I don't want to be out of order or what happened. Like I said, that after that match, well, that's when, of course, the AJ John Cena thing happened. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, like I said, AJ accused of being with Cena, despite the fact they both denied it. They were friends. It was a business dinner. Blah, 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 blah. He said, she said. So, uh, one to our next match, which was Atria Squasher, which I was fearing. We saw my man, woo woo woo, you know, and Zack Ryder taking on a little Del Rio. And I said this and I knew this would happen. That a little Del Rio was going to imagine that Zack Ryder was Randy Orton. That's what happened tonight as a brother prepares for his match against Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell. Uh, Zack Ryder had some offense, but of course, a brother does what he does best. Weaken the arm and beat Zack Ryder yet again. He's wrestled Ryder before and wanted a squash. That's what happened today. A brother put Zack Ryder in the cross. Allbreaker got the victory, but he wasn't done yet. He did say that, I did say, and I was right, that Alberta was going to imagine that Zack Ryder was Randy. And he said, Randy Orton, I can't wait to beat you in Hell in a Cell. And he put Zack Ryder back in the cross on break after the match and said, Damn, Randy, damn. And eventually, Zack was Randy, of course, sending a big message to Randy for their match at Hell in a Cell as Alberta, uh, their wheels name was being shouted out by it. Ricardo as Alberto kept the arm breaker on Zack following the matchup. Now on to the main event, which of course was the Big Lumberjack match. Sheamus against CM Punk, because they were supposed to wrestle a month ago on War, but of course Punk ran out, and that was of course the big night when Paul Heyman made his return as Punk's guy. So now we got Sheamus and Punk finally wrestling on War following the main event match, of course the Lumberjack match. Typical Lumberjack match. Heel beat up the bad. The heel Lumberjacks beat up the good guy. The good Lumberjacks beat up the bad guy. It was an okay matchup. Uh, Punk and Sheamus were having a decent matchup. Control was somewhat back and forth. But the match ended up being a no contest as running back came sprawling down to the ring to beat the crap out of Punk. Delivering his own little message for Punk for their match this Sunday. And that's how we ended War. With Sheamus and Cena um, Punk's match being an okay matchup, but ended with a bad ending with uh, Ryback coming out and being the crap out of Punk. Delivering a big message for their match in Hell in a Cell, which I believe will be stupid. That's one of the reasons why I believe Hell in a Cell, in my mind, is going to be the worst pay per view of the year. In my mind. That's just my opinion. Because you got five matches made right now. You got two title matches that will be fucking stupid. Big Show and Sheamus, which is going to be terrible. And right back in CM Punk, the only reason why they made that is because they can't find anybody else like John Cena. The roster is so stacked, you can't find anyone. They can't push any other good guys. And I've said this before about John Morrison. They didn't want to push John Morrison because they didn't want to have any any face go oh, more over than Cena. That's why they had to make Punk heal. Because they didn't want Punk to go more over than Cena. You know, Punk would always be second banana to Cena. So that's why I had to put Y back in. Because no one is a Cena. So, uh... There... There you go. So... 
Like I said, Punk wins the match by disqualification. It wasn't a contest. It was disqualification. Punk wins after right back beat him up. And uh, like I said, Hell in a Cell is going to suck this someday. In my mind. You got two stupid title matches. Big Show, Sheamus, CM Punk, and uh, right back. And the undercard, that's weak. You got Mans and Coffee would be okay. The taxi title match between Walt Scholars and Team Elena will be okay. And Randy Orton and Sam and Alberto is okay. We have no other matches, man. We could have a possible U.S. title match between Cesaro and Justin Gabriel could be revealed on SmackDown. Same with Caitlyn against Layla against E. Possibly in a triple threat for the Divas title. Probably find out more matches maybe on SmackDown and on Raw. But when it comes to this go-home wall before Hell in a Cell, it's like, oh, okay. Just, uh Mix back again. One good match. Vicky replaces AJ as AJ is accused of having a relationship with Cena, but they both deny it. And of course, right back in Punk's match doesn't look any greater. They don't... Like, this wall did not convince you to buy the pay-per-view. It convinced you, wow, this pay per is going to suck. That's what I got out of it tonight. Especially the whole right back CM Punk thing is going to be stupid. That is it for my wall review for tonight. See you all later. With that in mind, you all have been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later. Yeah.